Hello. A lot of jobs are bullshit, I've noticed. What about your job? What do you do all day? Look, I've had a lot of jobs. Don't worry about me. I've red pulled an entire generation. But uh, I'm essentially retired now. That's what I'm, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. And I'm talking about the vast amount of stupid jobs that don't contribute anything. In fact, the no amount of jobs that just chip away at the economy is amazing. And these people don't know this. They go home going, another hard day at work, ruining people's lives. <laughs> The drug war, I guess. Everyone involved in that. You're ruining someone's life. You're devastating some pot grower's life. For what? Even if these cops who bust someone for a dime bag of heroin, they take the dime bag away, throw it away. The, the guy gets out in 24 hours and he goes, buys another one. So you just bought, you, you just facilitated the purpose, purchase of two dime bags. Anyway, here's just some random ones. Masseuse. Number one, masseuse. That's not a job. You rub lonely women. Because they want intimacy without that whole penis vagina thing. And in their defense, I imagine that must be very invasive. Having an organ go in and out of your body. Ugh. Just rub me. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't help anything. Number two, stand-up comic. Yes, there are those who make it. Louis C.K., David Cross, Bill Burr, very talented guys. Dave Chappelle, huge asset to the world. But that's a fraction of a percent of the guys out there doing it every night that are in the trenches and they get paid in drink tickets. They get like 20 bucks. The only way they get 150 bucks is when they do 17 shows that night and they keep repeating the same jokes all night, basically just karaokeing a bunch of jokes they wrote for themselves. And they never settle down. They never have kids. They're all losers. And the amazing thing about stand-up comics is they think they're like some sort of really important thing that people care about. You suck. And ladies, if you're over 25, don't date these guys. They're rapist beta males for the most part. Number three, I don't even know what this is called. Foot guys? I was walking by this Chinese medicine thing, and they this culture, Asian Chinese culture, whatever, is 40,000 years old at least. All right? Canada is a few hours old. It started in the 80s, basically. And you guys still think that your toes connect to your eyeballs? And if, oh, you, you, have, you have liver cancer? No problem. I'll just rub your baby toe or I'll push here on your foot. How can a civilization so old believe in such total and utter crap? Even at those Korean spas, they say, oh, we, we filter the air through crystals so you get more energy and more diodes and more Christianthinum zyconium. It really, have you ever heard of a... a Placebo test, because your entire foot theory is not true. For yoga, yoga is stretching. I know you sweat when you do it. That's because it's hot and it's painful and it's tiring. I didn't say it's not hard, but so is standing on one leg for four hours. It's not exercise. It's not cardio. Yoga is stretching and it's bullshit. And if you're a man and I see you with those little yoga mats, I mean, that's a clan hood. I could, I could never talk to you. You're, you're the worst person in America. You're not a man. Number five, anyone working in recycling is working for the mob in a racket. It's a guilt tax. We get paid to pretend that recycling works. We put them in dumb little buckets. They all go in the same landfill the end of the day, at the end of the day. The only thing they really recycle that is cost-effective is aluminum cans. And homeless people, old Chinese ladies with a giant bamboo pole and two bags on either end, they seem to be handling that just fine, picking through the garbage. But these plants that they tax us to pay for are all a myth. If you are involved in the recycling industry, you are in the mafia. Number six, firemen. Sorry, guys. Uh, now, a good 80% of firemen are volunteer. If we're talking about non-big cities, I love you. I love you to death. And uh, upstate New York, firemen, best guys ever. They volunteer their time. But as far as like New York City and LA goes, fuck you guys. What about 9-11? Okay, I know. That was great. That was great. But it's been a while and the price of bra bravery is Real expensive. We can't afford your $100,000 pensions. And it, cops' pensions are nuts too, but at least they work for a living. You get paid while you sleep. And then you retire at 40 and open a bar. Yeah, but we had smoke inhalation. I don't know. I've been in New York City for almost 20 years. I've seen maybe two fires. I hear a fucking siren every single day. Someone's carbon monoxide alarm goes off. You got to send two trucks down. It's a scam. And we don't need you. Oh, you want no firemen? Uh, how about less? How about less? 
Number seven, exterminators. Now, I, I know if there's a million bees in your basement, that we need a guy to come in and just fsh, gas them all or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the guys who come by regularly. I had one guy, he came at like seven in the morning. Uh, often, I think my landlord hated me because we partied a lot. And he was right to hate me. But he would send this exterminator by, and I, he wouldn't give me any copies of the receipts. I had to photograph his receipts because I didn't trust the, the kid. He was a child. He was like 20. And he would go, yeah, we're going to take care of this. You got roaches. Uh. And he would put this, this grease, this anti-roach stuff, on the hinges of my kitchen cupboards. The hinges. And then they would explain all this jargon about, oh, yeah, what's going on here is um, it has to be, uh, uh, the, the, they get in the, the atmosphere and blah, blah, blah. And when someone explains their job to you, you know they're full of shit. And I didn't include these guys in the list because I love them so, but AC guys, air conditioning guys, they come and they talk about BTUs and how you need a new engine for this. And, and I, I, I was saying to the guy, I don't want to take a night course in your trade. If I wanted to do that, I would sign up and I'd be working at your company. So don't teach me about your job. Just make it cold in here. And that brings us to, of course, number eight, sommeliers. I think they know they're full of shit, right? They never do taste tests. Every time they're challenged to, to name a wine, they go, oh, I can't show up that day. I don't think they could tell the difference between white and red if they were blindfolded. That whole thing is a lie. I went to some fancy dinner in Paris once. The guy had a big brooch that was like diamonds and gold of a cluster of grapes. And he asked me, I chose a random one. I always, when I choose wine, I just go down the price list. And I'm like, hmm, that 80 doesn't look very nice. Oh, that 30 looks okay. Oh, I'll, t I'll try the 25. That looks delicious. And he shows me this map of the vineyard I chose and says, asked me what side of the river I want it on. <laughs> How about the bullshit side of the river? Because that's what you're up without a paddle. Finance is number nine. Sorry, rich guys. I don't believe in your job. In fact, I'm pretty sure they did a test with a dartboard and uh, throwing random darts at stocks and bonds got the same results as you guys who spend all day doing that air conditioning thing where you talk about the market and China and how we have to divest and Trump is doing this, but the interest rates are so high, inflation's going to be bad soon. I don't fucking believe you. I don't think your job exists. I think you just sort of, you're like the monarchy. You got in with this rich guy thing, pretending that you can predict the totally unpredictable markets, and you take my money and just move it around. And it inevitably generates interest. I mean, you look at the stock market, even including the depression, it's basically been a 45 degree line up. Yeah, there's some dips. But if you look at it over the past hundred years, it's boop. So you guys are just sitting at a desk reading articles about finance. Your entire job is bullshit and you're fucking rich from it. But nothing can hold a candle to number 10, the biggest bullshit job in the world. And that's the whole concept of diversity, multicultural equality. I don't even know what to call this job. Uh, equality uh, enforcer. I went to this thing that uh, Gina Davis, I think, put on, um, and it was all about women in media and how women need to be 50% of action movies. And I was looking at the speakers. They had this big pamphlet, and every single job these women had, these, these paid speakers, was like, the Center for Diversity, Awareness, and Equality in Women and Young People, and Society's Awareness for Loving and and equality and being cool. And I thought, Jesus, every single one of these jobs is bullshit. Every single one of these jobs is some big corporation has to have a budget by law for anti-sexual harassment, blah, 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 some made up thing where they have to employ these people. And then these people go out and they have to find inequality. So you've monetized injustice. So of course, when you do that, they're going to just find it lying under a rock. And what you're really doing there is you're incentivizing these little disgusting shit stirrers who get in there and they, they get fucking Brenda Nike fired and stuff. They get there with a little pen knife and they stab you and then they twist it in. So a lot of these jobs are just useless taking advantage of people that believe in foot science. But these jobs, these equality jobs, these fake jobs where if you don't show up for work that day, the, the world is actually better off. The economy is better off if you don't show up for work. So you're not a parasite, you're an infection. And I thought a great example of this is uh, Jordan Peterson at McMaster's University had a letter. He, this is a guy who goes, not only am I not going to ask you for your pronouns, I don't think that's good for you. I'm spoiling you. I'm pretending that this bullshit exists. Anyway, they all, these groups got together. 
these committees, and they wrote a letter. These are his colleagues wrote a letter saying, this guy's evil, we have to stop him from his horrible inequality. Check out the names of these committees. Ready? The McMaster Students Union Women and Gender Equity Network, Network Coordinator. She's the network coordinator for this stupid made-up thing. Also on the list was the McMaster Student Union Queer Students Community Center Coordinator. Now, there's probably plenty of people working there, but this one's the coordinator. She gets all of their ducks in a row. Then, of course, we have the McMaster Students Union Diversity Services Director. Like, these kids go to these colleges, and part of their tuition is put towards diversity. No matter how, we, no one's proven that it's our greatest strength. It's just a thing that the money has to go to. So you're paying for this. Of course, you can't have diversity of thought. You couldn't have a right-wing speaker at this school. He'll get maced. But I'm going to take your tuition and use it to enforce this dogma. But my favorite group, and the reason I'm doing this video is the final group listed, or maybe the first group listed on this letter, uh, who, who put together this letter to thwart Jordan Peterson. And they are, of course, the PACIBCPPCLWG, otherwise known as the President's Advisory Committee on Building an Inclusive Communities Priorities and Planning Committee and LGBT Working Group. Look, we're all struggling trying to get through the day. But a bricklayer lays some bricks, and when he leaves at the end of the day, there's a wall there. You're tearing down a wall. You're tearing down the fabric of society with your bullshit fake jobs. You're an infection. And the best way to get rid of an infection is some antibiotics. And the greatest antibiotic in the world is, ironically, a fucking wall.